Hello and welcome to this video on pipes in Linux. Pipes provide a data flow between processes. Suppose you give a command like ls pipe to more. This simply means that the standard output of ls command becomes the standard input for the more command. Suppose there were no pipes. Then you would have to store the output of ls command in a temporary file and the next program more can read from that file. So clearly the pipe notation is more cleaner, intuitive and more efficient. In Unix environment, there is a class of programs called filters. Filters read the standard input, process and write on standard output. The filters are supposed to be small programs, do one thing and do it well. Filters are kind of building blocks for solving larger problems using shell programming. We can combine filters in a pipeline to solve bigger problems. For example, if we want to find most frequent words in a bunch of files, we can cat them, then we pass the output through tr filter. The tr command works on the complement of printable characters, that is white space, squeezes repetitive white space into one and replaces it by a new line. So you get one word per line. Then the output is sorted. After sort, the repeated words come one below another. Then we pass it through the unique filter. Unique suppresses the duplicates and writes a count of number of occurrences before the word. Lastly, we do a numeric sort, printing the lines in reverse order. So we get the most frequent words in files in decreasing order. Another example is to list all subdirectories in, in a directory by ls-al pipe to grep. Lastly, we have the example of printing the value of pi. Arc tangent of one radian is pi by 4, 45 degrees. So we multiply it by 4 and get the value of pi. So we can see that it is very concise notation for data flow between processes and it does away with completely with the temporary files. Just think how many files, temporary files you have to make if for the command cat tr, it makes our work easier and more efficient. How does it happen? In this example, the command ls is pipe to more. Both ls and more were developed by st as a standalone programs by possibly different programmers who did not put any code for communication in their programs. It has something to do with files or file descriptors to be more precise. In Unix, everything is a file. Standard input is a file, standard output is a file and standard error output is also a file and pipe is also a file. In fact, it is two files, one for read and the other for write. This is the pipe system call. You pass an array of two integers. After the call, the first element of array has the read pipe descriptor and the second element has the write pipe descriptor. Next, we have the dup system calls. Dup system call duplicates a file descriptor. Suppose you have a file descriptor old ft and you want the new ft to copy old ft, you can use dup. After the call, both file descriptors refer to the same file and can be used interchangeably. In case of dup, the lowest number unused file descriptor is returned. So if you want to dup the old ft to standard output, you must close the standard output before calling dup, assuming that the standard input was already in use at the time of call, the standard output ft would be returned by dup. Or you can simply call dup2 passing old ft and standard output file descriptors. Let us look at this example who pipe to cut minus f1 minus d space pipe to unique. We'll see how this pipeline is created. We'll look at the creation of processes and duplication of file descriptors. If you type this on the command line, the shell does the job. To illustrate, we'll write a program to do this. This is the program for creating the pipeline who pipe to cut minus f1 minus d space pipe to unique. First we create the pipe, 
the PFT one and then we do a fork. This is the child process. This process will become who? So in this process, we do a dupe of the std out file descriptor and write file descriptor of pipe. We close the two file descriptors in this process because we will communicate over the std out file descriptor. Then we do a exec of who. Now once the who starts, it will start communicating over the std out but actually it's a pipe so somebody has to read that pipe so it will sort of block until unless some uh, pipe reader comes some next process in the pipeline comes up and uh, we create the next process before we create the next process we make one more pipe and this is pfd2 then we do a fork this is the second child who will become cut. We do a dup2, dup2 on pfd10, that is the input, standard input, and pfd10. We do a dup on std out and pfd21, write file descriptor of pipe. We close uh, pfd10, that is the read file descriptor because we will read from the std in file number. We close the pfd11 because we will never write on that, that part of the pipe. We close pfd20 because we won't be reading from pfd20. And we do we close pfd21 because we are going to write on std out file num pipe disk uh, std out file descriptor and we do exec of cut so that is the sec second part comes up second process cut comes up now so who and cut can work but uh, unique also has to come up so cut will kind of get blocked till unique comes up and reach the file pipe now we do another fork and uh, this is the third child who will become unique. We do a dupe on pfd20, the read pipe descriptor with uh, std in file number pipe uh, file in file number file descriptor. And we close pfd20 because we will read from the std in. And we close pfd21 because we will never write on that. And we do exec of unique. So this is how the third child comes up, then making the pipeline complete. Who cut f minus minus f1 minus d space pipe to unique. So this pipeline is complete, this process will execute. And finally, we wait for everybody to close. So we close the two file pipe descriptors and we close wait for each of the three processes to come conclude. And they should conclude the pipeline. There is one thing that is uh, quite obvious here that uh, with a pipe only processes who are related can communicate. You cannot put to a pipe between two arbitrary processes. They should have a common parent like this process, this program, this process or they should be parent and child. So that the common parent can set up the, can create processes and set up the file descriptors correctly so that the pipeline can work. You can find the source listing of the program at http colon double slash pit dot ly slash pipes in Linux. That's all we have got on pipes and Linux. Thanks very much for watching. Have a good day.